Biden is fighting to keep his campaign alive during solo press conference. I told you guys that it wasn't going to be as bad as you think it was going to be. And the media was going to play the role of covering it as like, uh, you know, he had some moments, but he ultimately pushed through. Look at what a big boy he is. And that is the overwhelming consensus. Obviously, in the normie sphere, everyone's talking about Vice President Trump. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. Everyone's talking about President Putin. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. You've got big President Putin. But in the media sphere, in the in the sphere of those with actual proximity to power, uh, the way that this uh, press conference was, uh, was, was reviewed was, you know, he showed that this is his favorite subject and he's uh, good at talking about NATO. Look at him. He's so good at foreign policy. The president took questions last night at his first solo news conference in eight months. He showed command of foreign policy over nearly an hour, but also stumbled at times. The big question now. I should have just let George say it because he just literally said it. He said exactly what I said. He showed command over foreign policy, but he had some stumbles. Like Overnight, despite a rising wave of opposition, President Biden making clear his mind is made up, convinced that he remains the best candidate to defeat Donald Trump. I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once. And I will beat him again. During an hour-long press conference, Biden taking questions from nine reporters, hoping to demonstrate he has the mental fitness and stamina to stay in this race and lead for four more years. I'm not in this for my legacy. I'm in this to complete the job I started. But out of the gate, Biden mixing up his own vice president and his rival. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. Trump seizing on that moment, writing, great job, Joe. He said, great job, Joe. Oh, you're doing great. It's so funny because, like, in a way, Trump can't be beating on him too hard for two reasons. One, because he wants him to stay in the race because he knows that's a beatable candidate, unlike the rest of the Democratic lineup. And he also can't be beating on him too hard because then he's going to look like he's, you know, he's just, like, doing elder abuse. And no one wants to see that. But, of course... The fact that he's pulling his punches also causes other election watchers to see him as like uh, a person that's moderating his positions. So in a way, it's a win-win-win for Donald Trump to just like kick back, let the media cycle eat Biden alive. And, um, you know, they just do the damn thing with the RNC. That's going to that's really going to swap uh, the attention, I think, unless Biden actually says some fuck shit. In between now and the RNC, like the media will, of course, shift their attention, shift their focus over to like how insane the Republicans are, even though I suspect that this RNC cycle is going to have uh, the Republicans trying desperately not to come across as like super radical. So we'll see. Hours earlier, a similar mistake. Biden introducing Ukrainian President Zelensky as Russia's Vladimir Putin. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. We're going to beat President Putin. President, President Putin. We're going to beat President Putin. Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin. Good catch, sir. You really killed it. But even as he pushed back against concerns about his age, the 81-year-old admitting. I just got to just pace myself a little more. Pace myself. In the next debate, I'm not going to be traveling in the 15 time zones a week before. <laughs> But the president was defiant, dismissing the growing chorus of Democrats calling for him to exit the race. I served in the Senate a long time. The idea that senators and congressmen <coughs> running for office worry about the ticket is not unusual. So there's a long way to go in this campaign. And so I, uh, I'm just going to keep moving keep moving and because look I got more work to do we got more work to finish and while he said he has full confidence in his vice president Kamala Harris's ability to be president from the very beginning I made no bones about that she is qualified to be president that's why I picked her he made clear he would only reconsider his decision to stay in the race if polls show he has no path to victory no unless they came back and said there's no way you can win uh-oh they're giving him the solid edit again. Chat, this is a dangerous prospect. They're giving him the, the dignity edit. For the past 
two weeks, three weeks, they were not doing that. They were just showing it raw. Now they're giving him the dignity edit where, you know, they're just like chopping it up to make it sound like he's got making it sound like he is very coherent here. This is we, we covered it yesterday, but uh, the New York Times didn't give him the coherence edit and immediately fucking wrote without paraphrasing exactly what he had said verbatim. President Biden said polling in the presidential race is premature because the campaign really hasn't even started. I mean, hadn't started in earnest yet most of the time at start till after September, after Labor Day. Labor Day. Where is the ellipses? The issue is not his current performance as much as what his performance will look like in a month, a year, in three years. Why doesn't he get this? Because he is a resentful, spiteful, old piece of shit. And I'm done hiding the truth. Not only is it actually dementia, but he is reflective of the broader boomer side movement. And by that, I don't mean like, you know, genocide on the boomers. I mean the genocide that the boomers want to do to the rest of the world. That's literally it, brother. He is a spiteful, resentful old man. And many of us know those people in our immediate lives people that are just holding on due to modern medicine going too far extending the lifeline of all of these fucking assholes who have captured 75 percent of the wealth he's just a regular old crusty ass boomer who's just like why won't you give me what's due i deserve it mm, i deserve it that's it. He's just like, I've been in politics for 50 years. I'm the president. Look at how great my agenda has been so far. I deserve it. It's my time. It's my time. No, motherfucker. It's midsummer time. It's midsummer time. I'm done with this shit. I'm done with entitled ass boomers. I don't do a lot of generational politics because I think it's like, ultimately, it lends itself so perfectly to reactionary sentiment. But God damn, dude. What is going on in the world, brother? Everyone over the age of 65 is just going crazy mode. They need to dial it back and go. They need to be put out the pasture. Okay. Go live in a fucking retirement home. Fuck each other. Silly. Get all of the fucking gonorrhea on the planet. If you want to do all of that, that's fine. But stop fucking the bag up. We need to do a forcible extraction of all of the wealth that is captured at the tippy top right now. And I don't mean by like, I don't know. The, the new geriatric focused economy that we are going into. I'm talking like, just take their money, take their fucking money. It's done. Take their power away. Take the keys to the car. No more boomer shit. As of five minutes ago, the latest house them to call on Biden, the dropout did it to his face. Lamau respect. Apparently Mike Levin told Biden directly to his face that he should drop out. Translation, Joe, my internal polls look very bad. Please drop out. Yeah, that is what that means. And that's not a bad thing. That's a smart thing. Yes, Biden is unironically harming the entire Democratic Party's uh, down ballot races. It's really fucking bad. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, John's popping. He said, thank you for holding me accountable. It is racist and sexist to believe Vice President Harris will be a stronger candidate than President Biden. I'm listening and I'm learning. Oh, no. There is white on white crime happening right now. This is, ooh, goddamn. This is the funniest thing. Yeah. Excuse me. How dare you say Biden should step aside to let Kamala Harris be the president or to let Kamala Harris be the presidential candidate? Excuse me. Why are you saying that? Biden is a gay black woman, actually. And you guys are doing a no growth. You guys are doing uh, a microaggression against a gay black woman like President Joseph Robinette Biden. Also notice the thing that the first tweeter has in common with them. Yeah. All these folks calling Biden to quit. They're all white guys because Biden is black. They're all also collectively saying Kamala would be a better candidate than Biden. It's so funny because like absolutely zero people give a shit about like what the broader black community or the black voter base has to say because polling has been conducted on the black voter base time and time again. And their opinions also reflect the opinions of these white people in positions of power. But zero people are talking about that. It's just a conversation exclusively that white people are having. John Lovett and the Pod Johns are experiencing what 
I have experienced for almost my entire career being treated like pariahs, Bernie bros. They're being treated like Bernie bros. Yeah. Also, the other part of this equation is that I, I don't like lean in too much with the, um, the, the, the black vote is shifting uh, narratives, but like the black vote has to a certain degree shifted in unprecedented levels over the course of the past decade. Not in a significant way, mind you, of course, but like the notion that like, oh, black people want Joe Biden. That's why you're racist is so fucking stupid. New inside the meeting with Biden and the, and the Hispanic caucus. Biden showed up an hour late to the Zoom. Frontliners M MGP and Gabe Vasquez tried to ask questions, but were denied. Levin told Biden to step aside. Call ended right after Biden responded to Levin. <laughs> oh my God. Shit is not doing all right. Why is the BBC so bloodthirsty? <laughs> Let me say this as clearly and as simply as I can. Inaudible. Guardian is coming out with the knives too. Hakeem Jeffries linked up and built uh, with uh, Brandon today as well. Hakeem Jeffries reportedly did not offer Biden his endorsement in the private meeting. For anyone on the Hill, this letter is explicit permission, perhaps even tacit support for coming, against, uh, coming out against the president. It seems neutral. It isn't. As I've said before, Jeffries is Nancy Pelosi's guy, right? Nancy Pelosi basically groomed him for this position. So he is going to do exactly what Nancy Pelosi said. And that's precisely what he's doing. Dear colleague, Hakeem Jeffries' letter. Over the past several days, House Democrats have engaged in a thoughtful and extensive discussion about the future of our country during a time when freedom, democracy, and the economic well-being of everyday Americans are on the line. Our discourse has been candid, clear-eyed, and comprehensive. On behalf of the House Democratic Caucus, I requested and was graciously granted a private meeting with President Joe Biden. That meeting occurred yesterday evening. In my conversation with President Biden, I directly expressed the full breadth of insight, heartfelt perspectives, and conclusions about the path forward that the caucus has shared in our recent time together. As House Democrats have done throughout this Congress, we will continue to work in the best interest of everyday Americans. Thank you for your continued leadership in the service of the communities we are privileged to represent. This right here, and Izzy is literally uh, a, used to be a press person, I think might still be, but used to be a press person for Ilhan Omar. This is what he does. He writes these letters. He's absolutely correct on this. For anyone on the Hill, this letter is explicit permission, perhaps even has the support for coming out against the president. It seems natural. Uh, it seems neutral. It isn't. And he's right. He is basically doing what uh, political reporting came uh, out about yesterday uh, that Nancy Pelosi was doing. Nancy Pelosi apparently told House Democrats, like urged them to one, speak out against Biden and two, if they have to call out Biden and call him to resign then, uh, and, and it's going to help their elections, they should do so. That is the exact opposite of what you do as the House Speaker. Nancy Pelosi's entire job her in, throughout her entire career has been to make sure that that never happens. So the fact that she is allowing leaks to happen and in those conversations basically saying, no, you can come out against Biden uh, giving explicit permission to come out against Biden at a time when Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi are supposed to be Biden's greatest allies that are supposed to stop this flow of discontent means that they want him out. The reason why they want him out is because they see the dire prospect of the down ballot races with Biden at the top of the ticket. And beyond that, they see the dire prospect of Biden's reelection. I think... Ultimately, it would be at this point, considering that Biden has like kept it going for this long, I would say that at this point, it would be silly to drop out before the RNC, especially when a lot of the RNC communications is going to be around the top of the ticket being Biden. Some of them have actually recalculated and some of the Republicans have actually started retriangulating their messages against Kamala Harris. No, not DNC, RNC. The RNC is starting in the next three days. Donald Trump is going to reveal who his vice president is in the next three days. Ultimately, yeah, I, it's going to be J.D. Vance, but that's different. Right now, even if they had convinced Biden to drop out yesterday or today or tomorrow, I doubt that they would come out before the RNC. They want 
they want the media to pay attention to the you know madness cycle of the Republican Party. It would be uh, uh, genuinely smart to you know wait until after the RNC is done to come out with the Biden dropout revelation. That is if they have actually convinced the old man to listen to reason. Having said that, in that time frame, however, you got donors saying they're going to freeze roughly $90 million as long as Biden stays in the race. Biden won't quit unless Obama comes out against them running publicly. That is uh, really chaotic, though. I don't understand why waiting would be better. better. Wouldn't it cause people to focus on the bad shit stuff that the RNC is doing? No. Biden dropping out is a major week, uh, week-long media cycle affair, maybe even a month-long media cycle affair. He drops out. Then people uh, shift their focus to who the new person is. No, that would dominate the news cycle in the same way that like Biden's current bad brain is dominating the news cycle. This is very fortuitous for Donald Trump because every moment that the media apparatus is not covering Donald Trump's insanity and uh, ridiculous reactionary sentiment and, uh, and how chaotic he is, how disordered the Republican Party is, and how they are responsible for abortion is a good moment for the Republicans and their electoral prospects. So the Democrats, in terms of the upcoming election, really desperately need the media to shift their focus onto the RNC. And Biden's flubs currently are kind of making that hard. So right now, I would go so far as to say that the Monday meeting with Lester Holt is a bad move. I think that Biden's team is bad. I'll just say it like that. I think Biden's campaign is not good. We already knew that they were not good when they decided to fucking trot him out in front of 50 million people in an early ass debate that is now going to possibly cause him to leave the election altogether. That's a massive flub. I am trying to find it, but there was a political scientist saying that Biden dropping out right after the RNC would be unlike anything we have a history of because it sucks the air out of their message and let Dems remake it however they want if Dems were smart. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I, I, I am in agreement with this. Uh, I think that tactically it would be an incredible move to just wait out until after the RNC if the Democrats were united, if they were smart, which they are not, and they are cowardly, they are feckless, they are legitimately scared. Some for good reason, because obviously making bold proclamations about the top of the ticket, uh, demanding that the top of the ticket drop out is going to create a, a, an air of panic. He made clear he would only reconsider his decision to stay in the race if polls show he has no path to victory. No, unless they came back and said, there's no way you can win. Me. No one's saying that. No poll says that. Insane. Nobody pay attention to the psycho on the red side, though, is such a funny take. You cannot wish cast Brandon's cognitive decline away. Like, what are you talking about? You can't do that. I get it. You really, really want the media to be like, Trump is bad. Everybody kind of understands that already, with the, ex with the exception of, like, the absolute psychos. But, like, the notion that, like, oh, people aren't paying enough attention to Donald Trump is so stupid when he is quite literally shutting the fuck up for the first time in his life when he normally would be chirping. Do you notice why he's shutting the fuck up? Because obviously Biden's mental fortitude or lack thereof rather is more important in the media cycle than what you know about Trump already. What Trump has said a million times over. You can want the American public to just close their eyes to that reality of Biden's obvious cognitive decline, but that's not going to happen. It doesn't work that way. But of course, a lot of people who have this kind of attitude, like Democratic Party loyalists who are behaving like uh, Biden dead enders right now, always have the exact same fucking narrative run, which is, well, Hillary Clinton will win if you vote for her. Well, you know, you guys are just not voting for the Democratic Party hard enough. It's your fault. That's not how elections work. You need to start holding your politicians and their staffers accountable for running bad campaigns. It's very stupid to just be like, oh, dude, I don't understand why voters just, voters just won't get their shit together. I don't even do that for Bernie Sanders. I was very critical of Bernie Sanders' campaign 
in the in both of the primaries. We talked about the disastrous Hispanic caucus meeting, but apparently the Brandon campaign is now attacking another, you know, another group of allies. And we can have a good faith disagreement without doing this. And then just as a political operative, it's just the incompetence of spending your time fighting Pot Save America, David Axelrod, George Clooney, and the most popular Barack figure Obama. and the most popular figure in the Democratic Party at a time when you are struggling with black voters is fucking insane. And again, and I don't and I don't know who's doing it in yeah. the White House. And like I believe firmly that it's not the people that that we know and are friends with, not just because they wouldn't do that to us, but because I think they're smarter than this, yeah. because this is this is just like really stupid shit. And the reason we're bringing it up in The New York Times is we know because reporters are reaching out to us that the, the Biden White House is is just pushing around stuff mm. on us. I had multiple calls from reporters today asking, uh, saying that two White House sources told them that um, I wrote George Clooney's op-ed. That's the rumor. Dude, this is craziness. When your dog turns the snakes, <laughs> meth. <laughs> Biden doing a Nixon speed run that Supreme Court ruling might come in handy. It is madness, dude. Biden literally, Biden's team communicated to, uh, I believe it was either Politico or New York Times, that if the donors are pulling out, they'll do it without them. I said this yesterday, and it bears repeating. The takeaway from this, yesterday's Biden presser, is that he is a malignant narcissist that's sowing chaos and disorder in the Democratic Party, which was, ironically, the strongest position the Dems had against Trump and the Republicans, especially among moderate voters and independents. The strongest thing that Biden has, and the Democratic Party has going for it, is that they're the adults in the room. They're the adults in the room. The strongest reason for why biden was elected in 2020 as the presidential candidate in the primaries was that uh he was the method he was the movement he was the guy who was going to defeat donald trump he's lost both of those things by the way this is another thing that i clocked but 24 million people watch biden's nato presser that is half the viewers of the debate the vast majority were over 55 uh, over the age of 55 that's crazy this is troublesome. It means that a lot of people are paying attention to the election cycle now, and they're, they're paying attention because they want to see whether Biden is competent or not.